Hello everyone, this is Yash Nama. Thank you for joining me on this video on introduction to marginal costing and absorption costing. In our previous video, we discussed some basic cost concepts including cost objects, fixed and variable costs, direct and indirect costs, and product and period costs. We learned those concepts with the example of Candy's Coffee Shop. If you have not yet had a chance to go through the video on basic cost concepts, I highly recommend you to go through that video before you start watching this video. The link to the video on basic cost concepts is available in the description to this video. It is important for managers to understand how a product or service is costed. The method of costing will significantly influence the reported profit numbers and any managerial decisions based on those profit numbers. In today's video, we will apply the basic cost concepts which we went through in our previous video to understand two different methods of accounting, marginal costing and absorption costing. Now, before I get into the details of marginal costing and absorption costing, let me ask you to think about a quick question which is unrelated to costing. How long does it take to travel from Melbourne to Sydney? Well, the answer to this question depends on the mode of transport. If you're taking a coach from Melbourne to Sydney, then it might take about 12 to 13 hours. If you're taking a flight, then it might take around an hour and a half. And if you're taking a train, it might take 10 to 11 hours. And if you're driving on your own, then it depends on your driving speed, number of stops, and so on. So the travel time from Melbourne to Sydney depends on the mode of transport. Now let us say if we ask Candy, what is the cost of a one kilo carrot cake being made and sold at her coffee shop? Then the answer to this question also depends. In this case, it depends on the method of accounting. Similarly, if we ask Candy, what is the profit for her coffee shop for the recent quarter? Then again, the profit or loss number varies based on the method of accounting. In this video, we will go through two different methods of accumulating costs, valuing inventory, and calculating profits or losses. One of them is called marginal costing, which is also known as variable costing, and the other one is called absorption costing, which is also known as full costing. In this video, we will look at what are the key features of these methods and what are the important differences between these two methods. Now let's start with marginal costing. Marginal cost refers to the additional cost arising as a result of producing one additional unit or the cost saved as a result of producing one less unit. Hence, marginal costing takes into account only variable manufacturing costs while calculating product costs. This mainly comprises of direct material cost direct labor cost, and any variable manufacturing overheads. Fixed manufacturing costs are not included as part of product costs in marginal costing. And also non-manufacturing costs, such as selling, distribution, advertising, marketing, and so on, are also not included to calculate product costs. Rather, they are charged to the income statement in the accounting period in which they are incurred. In other words, they are treated as period costs. So in marginal costing, inventory is valued at only the variable manufacturing costs. Now the same thing is explained here in the form of a diagram. So in marginal costing, we start with the total cost and split the total cost into manufacturing cost and non-manufacturing cost. All the non-manufacturing costs are charged directly to the income statement in the period in which they are incurred. Manufacturing costs are split into material, labor, variable, and fixed overheads. Fixed overheads are charged directly to the income statement in the period in which they are incurred. They do not form part of the product costs, whereas direct material, 
direct labor and variable manufacturing overheads become part of the product costs and to the extent the products are sold they are charged to the income statement as cost of goods and to the extent the products are unsold they appear as inventory on the current assets section of the balance sheet. Now let's move on to absorption costing. In absorption costing all manufacturing costs whether they are fixed or variable are taken into account to calculate product costs and non-manufacturing costs are not taken into account for calculating product costs rather they are charged to the income statement in the period in which they are incurred. In other words they are treated as period costs. Hence in absorption costing inventory is valued at full manufacturing costs. Now the same thing is explained here in the form of a diagram. In absorption costing we start with the total cost and split the total cost into manufacturing cost and non-manufacturing cost. Non-manufacturing cost is charged directly to the income statement in the period in which they are incurred and all the manufacturing costs irrespective of whether they are fixed or variable become part of the product costs and to the extent the products are sold they are charged to the income statement as cost of goods and to the extent the products are unsold they become part of the inventory appearing as current assets in the balance sheet. Again we can get back to Candy's coffee shop as an example to understand marginal and absorption costing. I hope you recall Candy from our previous video. Candy is a university student and she recently set up a coffee shop at her university premises. So let's say Candy would like to calculate the cost of a 1 kilo carrot cake which is made at her coffee shop. Now if she wants to calculate the cost of the cake using marginal costing then she will take into account only the variable manufacturing costs such as the cost of butter, flour, carrots, eggs, baking powder, sugar and any other variable manufacturing costs. She will not take into account the lease rent on her ovens, the salary of the chef who is employed on a fixed monthly salary and any other fixed manufacturing costs when she is calculating cost under marginal costing. On the other hand, if Candy would like to calculate the cost of the same 1 kilo carrot cake under absorption costing, then she will take into account both the variable manufacturing cost and the fixed manufacturing costs. So in this case, the salary of the chef and also the lease rental on ovens will also be included as part of the cost of the carrot cake alongside any other fixed manufacturing costs. Now let's take a look at the differences and similarities between the two methods. Both absorption costing and marginal costing take into consideration direct materials cost, direct labor cost and variable manufacturing overheads as part of product costs. Also both absorption and marginal costing treat non-manufacturing costs as period costs. So these are the two similarities. When it comes to the differences, absorption costing takes into account fixed manufacturing cost as part of the product costs whereas marginal costing does not take into consideration fixed manufacturing costs as part of product costs rather fixed manufacturing costs are treated as period costs in marginal costing. Now there is another important difference between the two methods. The format of preparing marginal costing income statement is different from the format of preparing absorption costing income statement. 
okay? So here on the left hand side, we have the format of marginal costing income statement. This is also known as contribution margin format of preparing income statement. And on the right hand side, we have the format of absorption costing income statement, which is also known as gross margin format of preparing income statement. Let us start with marginal costing income statement format. As with any other income statement, we will start the marginal costing income statement with sales revenue, which is the top line. Top line is the first line of any income statement. So in marginal costing, we start from sales revenue and deduct all variable costs. Important to notice here is that this includes both manufacturing and non-manufacturing variable costs. So we start from sales and deduct all variable costs to arrive at something called contribution, which is the difference between sales revenue and variable costs. And this tells us how much money a business is left with to pay the fixed costs. From contribution, we deduct all fixed costs to arrive at operating profit. This fixed cost can be manufacturing or non-manufacturing in nature. So in a way, the income statement is split into two parts, one part covering the variable costs and the other part covering the fixed costs. So the income statement is split on the basis of variable and fixed costs in marginal costing. Next, let's move on to absorption costing income statement format. Again, we start the income statement from sales revenue and deduct cost of goods sold from the sales revenue. Cost of goods sold includes all manufacturing costs, irrespective of whether they are variable or fixed in nature. So we start with sales revenue and deduct cost of goods sold to arrive at gross profit. Then we deduct all non-manufacturing costs from the gross profit to arrive at operating profit. Please note that the non-manufacturing costs may either be fixed or variable in nature. Okay, so an important point to note is that in marginal costing, the income statement is split between variable and fixed costs, whereas in absorption costing, the income statement is split between manufacturing and non-manufacturing costs. I hope this video was useful in understanding the key differences between marginal costing and absorption costing. In our subsequent videos, we will discuss the usefulness of both these approaches. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Take care and goodbye.